Come give the Lord a hand, praise y'all. Are y'all ready for worship? Oh, yeah.
say we walk in victory oh, yeah. this week and every week. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mm. We claim it right now. Amen. Amen. worship one more time. I mean, just glad to be here. No form or fashion. I know. I know we've had a, 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 a week, and for some of us, we've had some ups and we've had some downs. For others of us, we've been leveled to the ground. But no matter what, God brought us through. Amen. 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 God brought us through. Amen. Amen. Come on, God brought us through. Amen. Amen. So y'all, you know. God can do such wonderful things in our life. But when we come to worship, we want to come to worship to be a spectator. But I want to encourage your heart that if, if God has done anything for you in the context of this worship, I'm going to ask you to give God your very best. Amen. Give God your very best. Amen. And, and so I, I extend our welcome to you. For those of us who, who are listening uh, virtually, I'm glad that you are a part of this experience of worship. For those of you who are here, welcome. We are a warm and loving church. Yeah. Uh, we do our very best to make sure that you understand that you belong here. Amen. Amen. That you belong here. Everybody, everybody, not only are you welcome here, but you are all celebrated here. Amen. 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 Come on, let's celebrate one another. Let's, let's celebrate one another. moments in life, right? But how many of you believe that if you just can praise God through the difficult times that when you get through the other side, you can understand who God is in the context of your own life, right? Yeah. You know, that the songwriter had it right. When I look back over my life, I think things over. I think things over. So all I want to do is can encourage you. And his name is wonderful. How, you know, how many of you know that Wonderful. His name is wonderful. Oh, 
Oh, Lord. 
right? In time of trouble, he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Come on, can I get a witness? He won't leave us. He will not forsake us. There's something about that man. Then in the midnight hour, when you're going through what you're going through, So yes, and those who are here in person, please know that we do accept cash. And if you don't have cash, we do have, well, we do accept um, credit cards. So, oh, and um, Trustee Terry at the back, raise your hand right back there. And if you need given envelopes, please see him also. Um, and uh, everything, so yes. So everybody, please, please give. I love to praise Him. I do, y'all. Yeah. 
First of all, we thank you and we praise you. We honor you. All praise belongs to you, God. And so we just ask that you bless what has been collected here. Multiply it so we can be a blessing to your community. So this branch of Zion can go on and grow and touch your people and give people a lighthouse to be safe. To give people a safe place right here in New Hope Baptist United Church of Christ. So we just ask that you bless not only what is collected here, bless each and every person in here. Bless the rest of this service, God. We ask that you give our pastor clarity and peace of mind to deliver this word like he's going to do and like he always does with such excellence. So God, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. We pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Would not have room for the book 
books that will be written. May the Lord add a blessing to reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. After the smile selection, the next voice you hear will be that of our pastor, Kenneth King. Let's give God some praise.
words of appreciation again every Sunday. I'm surprised as well as elated. I have, a, I, have I think I have one of the most dynamic music departments uh, in the city. Amen. <laughs> Maurice, come on, give them a hand. Maurice and Lisa. Dictates 
show. And I want you, I want you, but I want you to go back as if you were in first century church. I want you to, to because many of us are behaving just like the disciples. So Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus, you remember I, I preached the other Sunday when Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait. Right? Now, in this gospel, according to John, Peter didn't have the patience to wait. And the Bible says that Peter got up and went fishing. Did y'all hear the scripture? Yeah. Peter got up and he went fishing. He and, the, and a couple of his disciple boys went fishing. But I'm sure that Jesus says, go to Jerusalem and wait. And then they will receive something uh, uh, that will give them power and the ability to overcome and withstand the adversities of life. I want to make this first point. Some of us, because we are impatient, okay. Jesus tells us one thing, but because we think that Jesus is taking too long, we begin to do our own thing. Yeah. Let me say that again. Some of us have been praying and praying and asking God for something, but because before God does what God does in God's own time, uh, 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 we get impatient and we don't want to wait on the Lord and so we then do what we want to do thinking that Jesus ain't going to show up, yeah. right? And the Bible says that, that, that Peter and his boys went fishing. It is interesting to me that we will always retreat back to our own behavior. You see, that's where Jesus called them out of. They were fishing on the shores of Galilee. And Jesus came by one day and said, y'all come on and follow me. They followed him. Y'all remember the scriptures, right? Y'all yeah. going to Bible study? Y'all can't break. I ain't got that much time. Y'all won't stay here long enough for me really to, to tell you what's happening because you got something to do. Uh, but, 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 but remember Jesus went by the sea of Galilee and told them, come and follow me, right? Yeah. And they left everything and what? Followed Jesus. But now Jesus has been crucified and they are having some doubts and some fears. And so what they do is go back to their yesteryear behavior. Yeah. I, I want to challenge you uh, today that, 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 that once you begin to follow Jesus, it will not always be what you want it to be. Uh, life will get difficult sometimes. Uh, you're going to have your ups and you're going to have your downs. But I challenge you not to go back to your yesteryear Behavior. Yeah. Some of us, some of us are on the road to recovery. But the moment difficult times come, we'll go back to our yesteryear behavior. Yeah. We'll go back to those drugs that we had laid down. We'll go back to the alcohol that we had done away with. We'll go back to old relationships we know had no business, we had no business being in in the first place. We'll go back to our yesteryear. That's exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. All right, bro? They go back to their yesteryear behavior. And so Jesus shows up. You know how Jesus is? Yep. Jesus going to show up. Mm -hmm. You know, at home, we used to use the word pray. <laughs> Jesus going to show up praying. <laughs> it means presently. We are addiction put on it. Good. But it means prayer. Jesus going to show up. All you got to do is be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And Jesus will show up. Yeah, yes, so yes. They have been fishing. And the Bible says that they've been fishing all night long. And they caught what? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They caught nothing. Because see, you go back to your own that old way of behaving. You go back to your, your old way of thinking, your old way of believing, your old ways of trusting. You have been with Jesus all this time. You've seen him heal the sick. You've seen him raise the dead. You've seen him open blind eyes. The, the mute way able to talk. You've seen him do all of this stuff. He was with you during the most difficult moments of your life. And yet, the moment he does not come when you think he ought to come, or do what you think he ought to do, you then revert back to being the whole you. Ain't nothing worse than the old you. There you go. Ain't nothing worse than a church full of old you. <laughs> and I'm worse than those who come up in here in the church and who have forgotten all of the goodness that the Lord had done for them and they bring their old you with them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. And I'm worse 
than people who come up in the church house or people who go up on their jobs or people who go into their relationship being their own you. Mm -hmm. Reverting back to places and things you used to do that get you in the trouble in the first place and then Jesus pulls you up out of that trouble and the moment you get discouraged and the moment you begin to doubt, you go right on back. That's what's happening here in the story. It's in the text. Don't look at me like that. It's in the text. Well. <laughs> then Jesus calls out to them. They've been fishing all night long. They ain't got nothing, bro. Ain't got nothing. Ain't got nothing. Ain't got nothing. Got nothing. Got nothing. So they're failing in their old you behavior. See, they went back. They participated in things they used to do. And it is failing them. These were fishermen. They know how to fish. They, they know they're expert in fishing, but, but this time they caught nothing. Right. And listen to what Jesus says when he calls out to them. He says, friend. How many of you know Jesus is a friend? Mm -hmm. Y'all don't know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all mighty weak. How many of you know Jesus is a friend? Oh, yeah. He says, friend. Yeah. And he knew they ain't caught nothing. He says, friend. How did you any fish? Now see, now somebody gonna get angry. Right about now, you know I've been, if I've been fishing all night long and you see ain't nothing in the net, you know I ain't got no fish, right? Right. So Jesus has to bring a level of consciousness to him, right? Y'all feel me, right? Uh, somebody, they don't, they don't recognize him yet. Because you know, if it had been one of us, we, 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 we would have gone to custom. <laughs> hey, you got some fish yet? You know us. You know, you know, I know you ain't talking to me. I know, you know, they will start, we'll start, you know. And they said, no, no, we ain't. They said, no, Ain't got no fish. We've been fishing all night long. No, we ain't got no fish. Yeah, yeah. We didn't come back. We, we've been following Jesus, but we went on back to our old behavior and our old ways. And then Jesus gives an instruction. Because if you have a relationship with Jesus, if you have a relationship with God, even in your worst moment, you go back to your behavior that you got no business going back to and participating and, in, and you are failing in it. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, cast your net on the other side of the boat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Huh? Even though you've been disobedient, even though you go and you retreat back into a behavior that I don't want, even though you've been hard-headed, stubborn, even though you've been nasty, and you've forgotten all the things I've done, Jesus says, cast your net on the other hey, side hey, of the boat. Hey, hey. Don't you know that Jesus will meet you in your moment of failure? Yeah, give up now. Jesus will, now you know, Jesus will meet you in your moment of failure. You don't ever give up on God. You don't ever turn around. You don't ever let go. No matter what situation you find yourself in, Jesus will meet you in your, as a matter of fact, that's when he meets you. Yeah. 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 That's when he does his best work. Jesus said, listen, fools, put it on the other side. Of the boat. <laughs> Come on. Right, right. Say so the Bible says that when they put it on the other side of the boat, the harvest fell. They caught more fish than they could do. Mm -hmm. And they knew what to do. No, yeah. That's how Jesus is in our lives. And if you would but be, I mean, you know, you know, there are stories that all of you all can tell about when you just yield yourself to Jesus, what Jesus will do for you in your life. And this ain't no supernatural thing. Why? Because all you have to do 
is obey Jesus. Obey. Yeah, yeah. You know what he's done for you in your past. You know what he, how he brought you through. He's seen you through danger, seen you, and you know that he's done all of that. And yet, and still you've gone back to your old nasty behavior. Oh, no. Man. Jesus doesn't give up on you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Peter does something. You know, Peter, y'all gotta, y'all gotta understand. John right now, John, John is not a part of this uh, uh, this gospel. You have Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke. They write, you know, very kind of, you know, yes, you know, Jesus good. John don't play that. Uh, John don't play that. John said, no, I'm, gonna tell you, I'm gonna deal with this. I'm gonna deal with you, Peter. You know, I'm gonna deal with you. Peter, Peter saw Jesus standing on the boat. He recognized Jesus. Now all of a sudden, you know, remember that he didn't betray, he betrayed, you know, remember that he denied Jesus. He gonna write, you know, because they went fishing. When they go fishing, they go naked. They don't fish, they fish new, because you're in the water. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't, you know, you, 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 you. Now, some of y'all need to simmer down. They, they <laughs> fish, they fish new. The Bible says he wrapped himself and then he began, he, he went on to the shore because he recognized Jesus. And now, you gotta be in the mindset of Peter. Peter is the one who denied him, and Peter's trying, you know, Peter's trying to regain his station with the people. Because you know everybody's talking about Peter. Yeah. You don't want to deny him. Don't come to, you know how we are. Yeah. Don't come up with me with all that, man. You ain't, don't, don't, don't holler at him like that. You denied him, you denied him three times. And now you want to play big. You know how we are? Yeah. That's right. You know, he ain't waiting for the rest of them in the boat. He gonna, you know, he gonna go running after Jesus. I know that's to be Jesus. I know that's not bread. I know, you know. <laughs> Jesus said, okay, just come on. I'm going to fix you some breakfast. And he invites them in. The other, he left the other two trying to bring in this major hall. That's how he is. That's how he, you know, you can always tell the guilty one. <laughs> they're going to try to restore themselves instead of letting Jesus restore them. Hey! Uh, and, you know, they're going to try to pay big in, in, yeah. in, in the life of, you know, their friends. They've got some friends like that. Yeah. They've been hoeing all night long and talked about you all day long. And then when they get to the church house, they're the first ones that want to roll down the aisle and yeah. punch everybody in the face about how goodness, the goodness of the Lord, yeah. right? But that's not how that yeah. works. Yeah. You know, so you left the people in the boat. You know, you know they were angry. You know those were angry black folks. You know, not this here. We have to bring this whole hall to And then you going out and meet Jesus trying to pretend like you've been, been on this side all along. No, you didn't deny him. But Jesus knows this because this, this is what happens when, when you behave the way you behave towards Jesus. Because Jesus is our Savior, right? So in the midst of all, this is a redeeming moment for, for, for Peter. He runs to Jesus and he, he says, you know, yes, Lord, I know we know who you are. We know who you are. Uh, they didn't, you know, and, and it says soon as Peter uh, heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped himself in the outer garment and went after him. The other disciples followed in the boat, following, and the net was filled with fish, and they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards, the Bible says, and when they landed, they saw fire burning and cold, and the fish uh, was on, and then Jesus had prepared breakfast for them, right? Jesus said, so you know, Jesus is a servant. We're all called to be servants. Yes, yes, Jesus yes. is not there. Jesus, yes, you know, Jesus, yes. Jesus believed in service, right? Yes, yes. And if we follow the example of Jesus, you cannot be a follower of Christ and not willing to serve. Come on. Hey, hey. You cannot be a follower of Christ yes. and just be a pew setter. You, you must find your niche. And you begin to say, I always appreciate what it be. What it be knew what she wanted to do. She had sat, sat still long enough to say and listen to the discernment of the Lord. And she, you know, she came to me. Now that's the kind of members I did. I need members that would come to me and say, this is what I want to do. I had to go beg and pull and, and coerce. She told me what she wanted to do, and she's doing a wonderful job at it. Amen. 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 And you know, so, so Jesus said to them, bring us some of the fish that you've been caught, you, you know, over caught me. And Peter decided to climb the, uh, back into the boat and drag them. And, you know, after all the work, they'd gone to the shore, and now he's going to show up. Uh -huh. So he's going to jump in the boat now and act like he didn't know all the work. Okay, so we'll let that, but that's Peter. That's Peter. But Peter's still my boy, because, you know, Peter was the one that can reel a knife. Yeah, I told everybody, everybody needs a Peter in their life. Hey. Uh, everybody needs a Peter for backup. back up. Peter cut the man's ear off. I need some Peters in my life sometimes that knows how to will or not, that knows how to call my family out there. Yeah. The Lord will repair you because the, the Bible says Jesus put the ear back open. But every now and then, you know, I, I go into some places every now and then. I need 
somebody that know how to sing. So it's full of large fish. And all that. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. And they came and they had breakfast with them. And uh, they knew it was the Lord. All right? They knew it was the Lord. But here, uh, this is where, and I'm going to end. I'm going to pick up next week. I won't, but I want you to understand Peter. See, Peter was not a perfect person. No. Peter was not perfect. Peter did not. But this is the same Peter that Jesus said, upon my church, I will what? Be a church. Right. Peter was jacked up, y'all. Peter had some stuff with him, y'all. Peter was not perfect. That's why we don't ever give up on each other. Right. We don't ever give up on each other. Yeah. Peter, because you don't know what the Lord has in store. When you begin to give up on each other, watch, that's when the Lord brings people through and yeah. make them mightier than you. <laughs> because you think you can sit in the seat of judgment. You don't ever sit in anybody's seat of judgment. You don't ever give up on nobody. You make sure that you always stand back and let God have his way. You don't stand the way of anybody. See, that church to look a certain way, and to sound a certain way, and to walk a certain way, and to see a certain way. And look, we got our conditions of what we want. But I'm, I'm telling you today that Peter was in his jacked up behavior. Jesus is about to deal with him. Jesus said this morning. So when he finished eating, Jesus went on to the, uh, Peter, son of John, do you love me? Yeah. Well. Now remember, Peter denied him. Okay. Sure Jesus, did. Peter said, you know I love you. Watch them folk who answer you too fast. <laughs> you know you gotta be careful with me. You know, because I know what you said about me. I know what you did to me. I know how you backstabbed me. All I want to know is, do you love me? Yeah. That's all. That's all. That's what happened. That's just in the scriptures. See, when I appreciate this, give me, you know, somebody called me and said, I know they in the scripture passage. Then when they did the reset, I ain't, how come our preachers ain't never teach us that? Because yeah, they probably told them you just want to listen. Do you love me? Do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord. You know I love you. You know some of us are, are, are hanging around some folk who, 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 who do their best to convince you that they love you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, some of us love what you got. <laughs> some of us love what you bring. Some of us love how you look. <laughs> Categories. Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm the only one? Somebody say, you should know I love you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you yeah, just should yeah. know. You, you ever been in a relationship with somebody saying, I ain't got to say it. You should know it. Uh, 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 yeah, okay. Y'all stay right there. Uh, <laughs> then the Bible says Jesus asked him the third time. The third time he said, Simon Peter, do you love me? Peter said, he got hurt. People got Peter got hurt. You know, you know, we can put on hands. You know, we can play like we got hurt. Peter got hurt. Because maybe Jesus is remembering that you denied me. So I got to make sure. I got to make sure. Because, see, you, you, didn't, you didn't mess up on me long enough. You, you know, I come home and you're sleeping with somebody else. I, I, I looked, I go down the street. You've been having dinner with another person. Uh, you've been buying somebody else's clothes. You've been paying somebody else's rent. I'm making so sure I see all that stuff you've been doing. And yet you keep saying, I got to keep on asking, do you love me? And Jesus says, then Jesus says, if you love me, he says, if you love me, then you will do my will. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, he asked him three times, the same amount of times mm -hmm. that Peter denied him. Mm -hmm. Jesus denied, Jesus asked him three times, Peter denied him three times. Yes. See, what Jesus is trying to do is get him to a level of consciousness. Now, he, he's going to restore, because he still is going to be the leader of the church, but he's got to redeem yeah. Jeep, Peter, yeah. from his behavior yeah. of the past. Yeah. Don't you think, I'm going to end right now and I'm going to pick up next week. Don't you ever think that God is not in a redeeming yeah. business. Amen. God yeah. wants to redeem you. Yeah. God wants to restore you. Yeah. But you've got to go through a process. Yeah. Every now and then you've got to understand that there's a process that you've got to go through. Yeah. Nobody is redeemed.
I'm gonna hang in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna learn what you like to eat. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna cook it for you. Talk, God, talk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna learn what you like to win. And I'm gonna lay it out for you. Yeah. See, that, that, see, 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 I know I'm talking strange because nobody wants to serve each other anymore. You cannot be in a relationship without serving one another. If you're doing all of the giving and all of the serving and all they're doing is receiving, you're in a lopsided relationship. Jesus understood this about Peter. It was a lopsided relationship because Peter denied it three times. And so Jesus got to get him straight. And at the end of the day, he becomes the leader of the church. But you have to go through a process. Yeah, yeah. You want to be a member of this church, you got to go through a process. You know, our process is easy. All we ask is that you love one another. Mm -hmm. That's our process. We ask that you come to worship. That's part of our process. We ask that you give so that others may have. That's part of our process. We ask that you be, be involved in the ministry. That's our process. I have people who come to church and all they make you have to do is just sit and watch. That's not, that's not, no, no. The process is to be involved when we serve one another. And when all of us are working together, what a mighty work we do. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. of the New Hope experience. Yeah, some of y'all have been coming now all pandemic long. Some of y'all have been coming half pandemic long. Some of y'all have been coming. But if you, if you, let me ask you, if, you, if there's an interest in you being a part of this ministry, just raise your hands. I'm going to have a deacon. There you go. I see somebody in the back. Anybody? Did I see somebody? Did I see your hand up, sir? Did I see it? Anybody? Okay. Did I see it? I see a hand in the back. Anybody else? You just, you just, listen, it ain't that big, y'all. It ain't all that. You ain't, what, what do you think we're going to do to you? We're going to take them from you. We're going to if you want a loving home to be a part of. That's right. That's right. Right. See, see, love is so strange to us sometimes that when God presents us with love, we don't even know what to do with it. Man, I was telling y'all, y'all were going to hell every Sunday. Beat, brow beating and all that kind of stuff. You, you know, you, you can receive that. I don't, that's not me. That's not a part of the ministry here. It, this is hell for many of us. <laughs> this is hell. Some of us are just living in hell right now. Uh, based on what we're going through. Yeah, sure. But we want to develop the prayer as it is yeah. in heaven. Yeah. We're trying to pull heaven to earth. So again, if there's anybody just raise your hand, I see, I saw a hand in the back. And I, we got just, I got I, another hand. Okay. Anybody else? Just like that, just raise your hand. I'm not going to pray. All right. All right. I'm going to ask this. Oh, I see another hand over here. There you go. Now, no, 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 you know, the table, look, the table is spread. All you got to do is come and die. The table is spread. All you gotta do is come and die. Anybody else? So I have one, two, three. Okay. All right, the deacons will meet with you immediately after worship. Or the trust of one of us, someone the one of these will meet with you immediately after, immediately after worship. Don't pay attention to who's sitting beside you. Now, this is your salvation. This That's is you. Right. This is you. This, this, is, this is on you. When I leave a body here, anybody going, ain't a friend of mine going with me. As a matter of fact, if I try to pull with me, they're gonna fight me. There's a journey, I'm gonna have to take all by myself. Okay, okay. alright, so I got one, two, three. All right, do I have a fourth person? Alright, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this moment in time in which you've allowed us to come together and do your divine and holy will. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing in this ministry called the Hope Baptist United Church of Christ. We promise those who, who have who are wanting to enter in, oh God, we are promised to take care of them, to be with them, to walk with them, to nurture them through life's journey, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of doing so. And we honor you, oh Lord. And we praise you. And the people of God say amen. Amen. And amen. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds now for the moment of communion. Those of you who are virtually living us, virtually, you all go, go and grab whatever you drink and a piece of bread, a cracker, or something, and participate in communion with us. Amen? Amen. Amen.
reason why we do this is because this table was transformed from something old to something new. It used to be the Passover moment. But Jesus transformed it into a living moment whereby, whereby he explained to his disciples that night, this is, I'm going away. I'm going to have to leave. But I'm going to leave you with something. So he says to the church, he says that, that I'm going to ask Jesus to pray for the bread and to pray for the cup. But, but before we do so, I want you to understand that, that he took bread. And after giving thanks and blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, this is my body. This is something they had never heard this is my body. He says, take and eat all of it. Eat this for it represents what I'm about to go through. And then likewise, he took the cup out the sun. And he says, look, this is the new covenant, which is in my blood. So my blood will be shed for you for the remission of your sin. For as much as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death that he comes again. So that's all we're doing. We're just telling the world that we believe that Jesus will return. That's why we do this once a month. We are a witness to the world that we believe in the return of Jesus the Christ.